Hello fellow option traders, this is Jeff and welcome to the 510 Iron Condor Redux. Uh, back in April of 2013 I wrote this post in my blog about a 510 Iron Condor and at that time uh, the post or at least the examples that I gave used uh, underlines off of my A plus trading list and all these here will be familiar to any of you who watch my videos or even read my blog and uh, anyway um, over the past year I have had periodic questions about the 510 iron condor like are you still doing it and is it successful and and etc cetera, etc cetera. and actually to tell you the truth I have not done this 510 iron condor so that brings me to today or at least recently over the last couple of weeks I have uh, under management a um, account for relative or relatives not to be named that is worth about has about nine or ten thousand dollars in it and you know it's a thinkorswim or TD Ameritrade account and I've uh, been racking my brain about how to trade options in there because I don't want the owner of that account to have to you know at the end of the year write down maybe you know a hundred trades or something like that and figure out you know what uh, how much was made and what was the cost basis and is it short term or long term and if their options they're treated differently and I didn't want them to have to actually go out and go to a tax preparer to do their taxes so I did some research and I had heard about how uh, futures and non uh, well, let's put it this way, non-options um, on underlines that are not equities. In other words, the cash indexes. And the cash indexes, of course, that I am talking about are the ones that I trade at times, which is, well, the DJX is actually one of them, NDX, the RUT, which is the Russell 2000, and SPX, which is the S&P 500. They are all cash indexes. They um, settle in cash, so therefore there is no equ underlying equity. So what happens um, when you trade those types of instruments, I guess you could say, as far as options are concerned, they're treated a little bit differently and let me show you here let's jump back over <clears throat> to my browser and we'll take a look at here what is called a 1256 contract and a 1256 contract um, is, is a designation that the IRS uses here in the United States this only applies to the US which is uh, includes futures contracts foreign currency contracts and non-equity options or broad-based index options including cash settled ones so that would include those NDX, SPX, RUT and DJX instruments so what is the advantage well the advantage is there's no trade by trade accounting so in other words at the end of the year you're going to get from if your brokers TD Ameritrade you're going to get a 1099 I don't know what it is a B or something like that and in there it's going to show you your gains and your losses so um, then you you plug that into a form an IRS form and I forget um, and I apologize I don't know what the form is I may find that out and, and supplement this video or the post with the with the IRS form that you use when you um, file your taxes and another advantage of it is that your profits and losses are treated as 60 percent long-term capital gains and 40 percent short-term so 40 percent would be um, taxed at your normal 
income rate and 60% would be taxed as long-term capital gains, which uh, I'm not sure exactly what that is right now. I don't know if it's 20% of, um, uh, of uh, your normal income rate or not. But anyway, you we all know that long-term capital gains are taxed, I think, at 20%. Uh, rather than whatever your um, tax rate may be. So there's an advantage there. Um, you can still carry your losses back three years and there are no wash sale rules. So that's kind of nice too. So if you lose money and then you buy it back even cheaper and then you make money on it, um, that's okay. There's no wash sale rules there. So just a little warning here that I want to give you. Right here it states tax law is complex and regulated futures and op option contracts are even more complex. You should always consult your tax advisor with specific questions. So that's my disclaimer for this particular video in addition to the normal disclaimer that's at the front of all my videos. So um, the, it says here the IRS is not clear on whether the Qs and DIA and SPY options should be treated as 1256 contracts. Uh, on the one hand, they don't settle in cash, but on the other hand, they meet the definition of a broad-based index option, but, but there is an equity involved, and when they settle, they settle and you own shares. So I would not count on them being 1256 contracts. So I just did a search under um, IRC Internal Revenue Code 1256 and here we have form 6781 and if you're just trading for instance the SPX you just simply write SPX in here and look at your 1099 that you got and it'll tell you what your loss was and what your gain was um, and then you can put adjustments in here which would be uh, your transaction costs or commissions or whatever you might want to call it and then you end up with a number down here so um, you either made money or you lost money on these so it says here for short-term capital gains multiply line 7 by 40 percent and for long-term capital gains multiply line 7 by 60 percent and then you plug them into schedule d so that's <laughs> that's as much as i know about it from a tax perspective at this point um you know after uh poking around on this so that is uh, somewhat of an advantage to me. To me, it's like, you know, buying a stock, only you're not putting that much at risk and collecting dividends on it. And you're holding it for a long time. Or maybe you buy, you know, 10 shares of stock and you hold six shares for um, uh, more than uh, six months or a year and the other ones you sell quickly. You know, it's sort of like doing that. The nice thing we all know about options, at least as far as iron condors is concerned, is the limited amount of risk that you put into a trade. And we're going to take a look at that in just a minute. If you want to, uh, here's the CBOE page, which is all I did was uh, look at, up here at index options and broad-based indexes. Here's our choices. We have DJX, NDX, we have OEX, we have Mini, SPX, and all sorts of stuff down here. And I believe that these are all cash settled and they would all be treated as 1256 contracts. Okay, we have uh, the one that we're interested in though is SPX, which, which is the S&P 500 index options. Uh, we're going to be mostly looking at weeklies and uh, we don't care really if they're AM or PM settled because uh, we do not hold them to expiration. Just uh, as a rule, you're definitely going to want to get out um, at least the week of expiration and possibly sooner if, uh, if your profits are good enough so that you can take your risk off the table and take your money and run. 
Okay, uh, enough about that part of it, I believe. Let me just make sure I didn't want to cover anything else here. Yes, all you have to do is uh, just go to my website, to the blog, and select the category. And if you want to see everything that I've written about iron condors, just go ahead and select that. It says that there's 26 art articles. And here is the 510 iron condor. All right. Um, okay, so I think we are done with that, but I'm going to leave that up there just in case. Okay, so the one that we're going to focus on is SPX. And remember the 510 iron condor is um, we want to um, have a 95% probability of expiring out of the money on the put side and a 90% on the call side. And the reason why it's five, this, so that leaves five percent down here. Um, as far as we have a five percent chance of it actually expiring in the money. So um, the 510 Iron Condor also talked about how far out we want to do these trades. And what I said back then, and we'll just use those you know, sort of rules um, for right now, but we said six to seven weeks, which is um, five, to, that would be, uh, that'd be 30 to 45 days out, let's say. So that would be the range that we would be looking for. So we'll go over to our Analyze tab. We have SPX up here. We'll click on Add Simulated Trades, and we'll look to see what expiration is 30 to 45 days out. Okay, so uh, just for giggles, let's pick regular July expiration. That's 32 days out. Okay, so we go back to our risk profile and this little calendar icon up here, we click on that and we look at July and we click on the 18th of July. So this is going to, this tells us right now what the standard deviation is for the 18th of July. So we're, the price of SPX right now is at 1936 and it's saying at 1900 to uh, about 1975 roughly is one standard deviation. Well, that's nice. But what we're looking for is our uh, where our line would be, where our break even would be, or our short strike should be uh, to give us a 95% probability on the put side. So we're going to slide this line right here until we get 5% roughly up there. So let's just, uh, oh, it's not changing. Oh, it's locked. Okay. All right. So we unlock. Make sure you're unlocked down here. All right. So we have percent. You can change this to um, a standard deviation or dollar amount or percent. So we're sticking with percent. All right. So um, it's minus 10% and plus 10% by default. So we're just going to grab this one here. And why are we not showing percent here? All right, just to let you know in case this happens to you, I had to, I clicked on the reset slices and reset parameters, and now everything seems to be functioning the way that it should. So we're looking for this number to get to 5%. So we move the bar up, I guess you could call it, until we get around 5%. Okay. And on this side, on the call side, we're going to look for this number to get to, this one up here to get to 10%. So we slide it down this way until we get to roughly 10%. Okay, so that is, um, that's pretty much going to equate to a delta of 5 and a delta of 10, as you'll see here in a moment. All right, so we're looking at regular July expiration. So we'll go back here 
and uh, our numbers are on the put side 1820 so here we are here's 1820 and well we have a delta of 10 um, but I guess it didn't work out the way that I thought it was going to work out all right so that's 25 cent credit for that one and then on the call side we're looking at 2030 so if we move up here to 2030 and we say sell a vertical there that gives us 10 cents so this trade is worth a total of 35 cents so remember this is a high probability trade at least uh, the way that I look at it okay so now we want to now let's take a look at a chart and see kind of what that looks like. So a way that you can do that is to just say set slices to chart. And you want to just look at one chart so you just click on just this first upper left hand square here and up pops your chart. Now I have a uh, style built in here that is called um, Option Guru Dark No Study. So I don't have any study on here so we can get a better picture of what this actually looks like so our expiration date is out here uh, this is the current price line right here if we look at those price slices go back here to the analyze tab the price slices are at the current price and then our plus um, probability of um, out of in the money of 10% uh, and our negative or put side in the money probability of 5% and that's what it looks like so we have these three price slices we go to the chart and here are our three price slices right here we have squish this down a little bit so we can see them all this one is so far up okay so now we're saying we'll get rid of this one for clarity now we're saying that uh, this is our expiration line right here of July and we need the price to be with between these two lines uh, come July 18th or the week before so actually we're looking here let's throw one of these in here oops I don't know what the heck happened there There we go. And we're looking at time. There we go. So actually between this date and this date we need it to stay between these two lines. Looks like it's got a pretty good chance of doing that. I like a little bigger cushion on the downside because we all know it's the escalator up and the elevator down. So, uh, looking into the past, it looks like as though it has a pretty good, it's had, it, it's been in a pretty nice run here lately, and we've been in trouble this last week. Um, it's kind, of, it's kind of, kind of like searching for itself, but even so, we're just talking one, two, three, four weeks, and even if you look here, one two three four weeks it stayed well within this band so this is a pretty high probability trade okay so now on the analyze tab back to that okay so we have like a nine thousand dollar account so um we're putting if we look at the risk profile we're putting 465 dollars at risk and we never like to do you know more than 10% of our account so we could do two of these or a little short of a thousand dollars at risk out of a ten thousand roughly ten thousand dollar account so that would that would work good it's well within my parameters so if we do two on each side that's uh, would be seventy dollars in four weeks with a very high probability what would the white line look like in that 
over that period. So we can click on this little calendar down here, move it up to say like the Wednesday before. We'd want to get out on the 11th by the 11th here. So if we look at this Wednesday, we can see that we are almost at maximum profit in a rather wide range here. Um, so there's a good possibility that we could get out with maximum profit by then. So there's lots of different ways to slice and dice this. You can use different underlines if you want to do different cash indexes. You can, uh, you're more than welcome to do that. I would, the purpose for this though is that 1256 contract and that's why um, we want to stick with the cash indexes with our 510 iron condor. The problem here is that the implied volatility is only 12%, whereas a lot of these other ones are up in the 20s and 30s, which would be much more attractive from a premium standpoint. But remember, the reason why IV is low is because it's not volatile and it doesn't move very much. So if we can grab 70 bucks every four weeks, that's much better than buying a, a hundred shares of a stock and collecting um, a $30 dividend every quarter if the stock doesn't change in price at all. So that's a lot better than collecting that dividend. And tax treatment wise, it's almost equal to it. So uh, I'm going to leave it where it is right now, where we're at. I'm going to end this particular video. Um, I hope that it generates some questions and some discussion uh, amongst all of you. I would appreciate any emails that you may have about it. I am going to kick this off probably this week and start doing these types of trades. And I say probably. Uh, I'm going to lock this down right here and we're going to keep an eye on it and see how it works out. I reset these parameters and slices here. And, uh, and we'll see how it works out. So uh, without much further ado, I'd like to thank you for watching. If you have any questions, email me, jeff at theoptionguru.com. And uh, I'll throw your questions out on my blog. If you don't actually ask the questions on my blog so that everybody can see the questions and the answers. So that's it. Thanks a heap for watching. Have a great day and happy trading.